Hello and welcome to Swinging Steve's uh, Beers, Cheers and Tears. And this is a little mini series that I do all based around the F1 and the weekend's... Uh, the, the, sorry, I've got some pirates making a right round. And the weekend's F1 performances. Um, yeah, so those people that are new to my channel, uh, you probably think it's all about F1. It's not. It's actually about reviewing beer and what I do. I drink a beer and this week I'm drinking Rheinbacker. If you've never drunk Rheinbacker before, if you're new to my channel, check this out. 75p a can at Aldi. Unbelievable. Really good for the price. I'm going to crack it open now because I'm absolutely gagging for a drink. Um, yeah, but the, uh, but also, those people that are new to my channel, I, this is like, I do like Formula One and I was tempted, I was toying with the idea to do a separate channel for this because it might put a lot of my subscribers off, it might not do, I don't know, but I suppose as long as they're aware that when I'm looking at the thumbnail this is based on Formula One, then they'll just not click on it if they're not interested, you know. But um, I don't want to, I ain't got time for lots and lots of different channels. I'd like to, I want to do an album review channel because I, I really like music and I want to do something based around that, but... Right, so let's top up a bit more. Go on, good. I'm just thinking, imagine I'm in Germany drinking this, you know, or Austria. Right, so dreams aside, this week's Formula One. What did I think about it? Well, let's be fair, it was pretty drab until the last couple of laps. Um, not much going off. Really, everyone pretty much stayed in their position. There were a little bit of dabbling in the midfield, and they, uh, they were a little bit towards the back of the field, um, back of the track. But uh, all in all, it was a pretty boring Grand Prix. Not a lot happened. Not really one to remember. But obviously, the final couple of laps did deliver some uh, little. And it's all down to the tyres. It's the second time now that Silverstone's uh, delivered a race where it's come down to the tyres and the degradation of the tyres and the fact that they've just. They just disintegrated basically and uh, fallen apart, uh, which does make for very exciting viewing. And hopefully, next weekend we'll get something similar. But saying that, obviously, I don't want it to come at the cost of um, a, 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 the health of a driver. You know, I don't, want, I don't want a nasty accident in this in that sense. But it does make the race more interesting, and it does mean that some people at the front might pull out, give some midfield drivers the opportunity to get a podium, etc. That sort of thing. So, um. A little bit disappointed about Williams this weekend. Now, Williams are, are getting there on... Are they getting in... More often than not, they're getting into the, the second round of qualifying. So it's obviously got qualifying pace or one lap pace, but it's still struggling in regards to the um, its race pace, which is a bit of a shame because they seem to fall back in the race uh, and they ended up pretty much propping the rest of the cars up again. I think... Uh, I think... What's his name? Um... Russell got in front of Reich and Reich had a bit of a bad race today. Uh, so, so yeah, there, there's a few little... Um, God, them birds are... It's because it's, it's time for bed. When it's time for the bedtime, they get right tetchy and they just squawk and squawk and squawk. Come to do her. Oh, God, here, look. She's come to do her. You alright, sweetheart? You alright? You want to go to bed? Is that what it is? Let's go to bed. Two seconds. There we go, look. Got a little parrot. This one's called Karna. She'll probably go onto my shoulder now. She likes being on there. When she starts squawking, I might have to put her down. I might have to put them away, actually. You all right? You happy up there? Yeah? Well, I'm going to Right, so, going back to what I was uh, talking about before. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to have to put her down now. She's very talkative, very chatty. She's very, she likes me. Didn't you? Yeah? I think she wants to go to bed. I think that's what she's telling me. Right, I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> Hi, back again. Yeah, uh, my wife, um, like, the rescue bird, she loves animals. And she's, uh, we've got snakes and all sorts, but uh, she rescues uh, parrots. So we've got a couple of parrots we'll look after. And she's, she's a nurse, uh, a nurse, she's a wife. My wife's a nurse, so she's working in late shift tonight, so I have to uh, put them to bed and look after them. But uh, yeah, they're interesting characters. One of, them, one of them's, uh, the other one you didn't see, Ruben. Uh, he's like a, a, red, a green, is it a green wing? What do they call them now? Um, the red one. Like it's not a scarlet macaw, it's it's very similar to a scarlet macaw, but it's is it called a green wing macaw, something like that. Um and uh, yeah, he's he's got one wing, one foot, and a lot of his feathers missing. He's a bit worse for wear, bless him. But uh, anyway. So yeah, uh, here we go. So what we're talking about, yeah, Williams a little bit disappointed about their performance this weekend. Uh Haas, they're similar. Toro Rosso are interesting, I think, or Alpha Tori, whatever you want to call them. They're certainly, certainly showing a little bit more um, 
race pace, I think. At least Gasly is. Talk about Gasly later. So, right, let's get into it. So, the three drivers I'm going to do a cheers to. The first person I'm going to do a cheers to is Daniel Ricciardo. Now, Daniel Ricciardo had a pretty quiet race, really. I mean, he was bobbing in and out. He had that incident with uh, Grosjean nearly took him out. Someone else I'm going to talk about later. Um, what else happened? Yeah, and he, he had a decent race. He had a solid race. He finished fourth. And that's the highest Renault might get all season. Um, so I think, albeit two cars failed to finish, that being said, he would have been the best of the rest still, finishing sixth. So I think that uh, Daniel Ricciardo is definitely up there, showing that he is... A, he is a, what worries me is, being at Renault this season, is he going to start taking his foot off the pedal, so to speak. Um, excuse the pun. And sort of be like, well, I'm going to McLaren next season. And but the problem is when drivers do that, then they have to pick themselves back up again for the following season. But hopefully he won't do that. It were a decent race from him. And Ocon had a good race, actually. Esteban Ocon. So it's worth a bit of a shout. I nearly said him as one of my cheers. So yeah, Ricardo, he had, he had a good race. He had a bit of a tussle with... He got past, he pro, he got past both the McLarens, which are arguably faster on race pace. Um, so yeah, it looks like they've got something up the sleeve right now, doesn't it? Onwards and upwards. Interesting. So, yeah, Ricardo gets the first one. The second one... Uh, oh, a second cheers. Cheers. Goes to... Da, 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 Pierre Gasly. Now, Pierre Gasly finished seventh. He was seventh he finished, yeah. Yeah, it was. Behind Ocon. Because Ocon finished sixth. Uh, which I thought was very, very impressive. And again, this is what I was saying about the Alpha Tour. It, they seem to be picking up those points at the bottom when the big boys fall out and when the midfield don't have a great race. They're sort of picking those extra points up. Gasly's been quite consistent as well. Uh, seems to be more consistent than uh, Kvyat. Both drivers I actually respect quite a lot alike. Kvyat had a, a nasty accident and I was listening to the commentary on Channel 4 because I like the Channel 4 commentary. I like David Coulthard and I like Mark Webber as well. And I quite like... Yeah, I like their honesty and they, they, know, what they, see, they know what they're talking about. At least I think they do anyway. Um what do I know? But it was quite interesting when they were talking about the tyre exploding. Because it did look like the tyre did explode. Because it looked like it could have been a uh, a driver error. But it looks like it could have been a tyre a tire that the tyre blew out. You know. Which caused him to uh, come off the track. And if it was, because it was a real dangerous area, weren't it? What, I forgot which corner it was now. But, uh, yeah. So, Pierre Gasly. Yeah, he came through the field and he finished seventh. And I think that's a very solid finish. And again, he's getting those points for Alfa Torre. And I think he's a good driver. There's something about these drivers that are going up to Red Bull and not making it. Albon's the other one. Um, and it's sort of like, after Ricardo, they've struggled to fill that Ricardo void. Obviously, Ricardo left because he knew that Verstappen was getting all the all the treatment, shall we say. Um, and it seems to me like the other drivers that are going up there probably know that, but it seems like there's a hostile environment towards that second driver. It seems that way. I might be wrong. Might be wrong, but it's it's almost like I don't know. Um, some people have, have said it's the car, but I doubt it's the car because obviously Red Bull are, are still wanting to score points, and they wouldn't be getting rid of that other driver if it was a, if they were deliberately making that car bad because they'd know that, wouldn't they? And they'd be like, well, we'll not get rid of that. They wouldn't get rid of the make excuses up for Albon, you know, if they were deliberately doing something to the car. So I don't know. Anyway, that's a little bit of a conspiracy to think about, but um, yeah. So Gasly gets the other one. Cheers, so we've got cheers for uh, Ricardo. Cheers for Gaz, I've had to write him now because I can't remember him. The set, and my last cheers goes to Lewis Hamilton. Uh, mainly for that last lap and managing to get the car all the way around and just getting that final uh, victory. That final lap for victory, should I say. Really, really um, quite impressive. I am, I do respect Hamilton a lot. Yeah, some of the stuff that he says is not to my taste. Um. Well, actually, no. Actually, what he says is to my taste. That's wrong. Uh, some the way he presents himself is not to my taste. I think sometimes he's a little. He's sometimes he comes across a little bit arrogant. He comes across like he's blessed and all this sort of stuff, and he comes across like um, what did he say this weekend? He said something this weekend. It's a little. It's borderline cringing sometimes when he's 
Yeah, um, and I know he's actually you can tell he's a decent guy, but um, and when you when you're that successful, and I mean well, let's be let's be honest, it, Michael Schumacher weren't exactly on Bullery. Um, God God rest his soul, and I hope he's all right. You know, but um, I know he's he's not died yet, but uh, yeah. Uh, all the best for Schumacher, but um, yeah, there, there's a lot of drivers that are successful, shall we say, that aren't particularly humble, and you know, so some of them come across better than others, don't they? I mean, everybody that I know that's met Nigel Mansell says he Nigel Mansell's a bit of a, a get, to be honest with you. Um, but everyone saw him as like this, this uh, almost like the Joker of the Formula One grid, you know, and this like British, you know, coming from a working class background. And making success for himself and doing it coming through coming through the hard way a little bit like Hamilton actually because he came back from not a lot of money you know not like a lot of the drivers I'm going off on a tangent here anyway I do like I've always been a Hamilton fanboy and he's it's actually Hamilton that got me back in interested me back in bring coming back into Formula One uh, in 2007 2006 so because I did get that show my career I got bored I switched off but anyway let's move on. So the next thing, but fantastic talent, possibly the most talented driver ever, definitely arguably the most talented British driver. It's difficult to tell because you can't compare eras, because especially when you think about how dangerous it were in sort of Jackie Stewart's era, for example, and uh, Jim Clark, and uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Graham Hill. But uh, yeah, uh, next, so next, uh, now it's a, oh, tears, I'm going to shed a tear now. So the first person I'm going to shed a tear for is Valtteri Bottas. Not because of, not through all, any fault of his own. His tyres degraded and they exploded and he's lost probably any chance he's got uh, regaining this championship. However, I do feel like there's going to be a bit of a wild card this year. And I think something that's going to play into the hands of somebody like Bottas is COVID-19. Because any of those drivers could potentially pick that up. And once that driver's picked it up, they're out, they could be out for two, depending on how the races land, it could be out for two weeks. So... I've got a feeling something like that's, that's going to happen. And I think something's going to happen to Hamilton. I don't know why, so I've got a gut instinct that something might happen to Hamilton. So, yeah, we'll, we'll watch this space. Um, so, yeah, Valtteri Bossa, shame, because he would, he, would, he would keep it on the pace with Hamilton this weekend. Uh, and if something would happen with Hamilton, or he had a little spin or something, uh, Bottas would have been there to get the victory. So he went from potentially nearly getting a victory to getting nothing at all. So yeah, I shed a tear for Valtteri. Not his fault, though. Second one, oh, racing point. When were they this weekend? Everyone was expecting them to get a podium. Everyone was saying Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg's going to come back and get his first podium. Hulkenberg didn't even get off grid. Some wrong with engine or something. Um... Who else? Or Hulkenberg. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, it, it was Lance Stroll, weren't it? Lance Stroll just kept for, 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 he kept falling back. He started. He, he had an okay qualifying, um, but he just couldn't maintain his grid position, and he just kept falling back and falling back. A lot of people have questioned his questioned his race craft. And I guess that did come into question a little bit on this race. He didn't have a great race, really. Uh, I didn't even did he finish in the points? I think he finished eighth, didn't he? So or ninth, something like that. It's not a great race for Stroll, really, especially when they're expected to be the next as good as Mercedes, arguably, or the next team after Mercedes. <sighs> so yeah, um, not great. So the team is all racing point. A bad bad weekend for them. Not just Stroll, not just Ulkin, but the whole team. It's not just it's not been a good one for them. Uh, and then last but not least, there's a few that could have gone this one. So Alex Albon potentially could have got it. I decided not to because he did get into eighth in the end. Uh, albeit he's got a penalty, I think, next week. A grid penalty due to that collision with um, Mark... Not Mark... I always call him Mark Ericsson. Um, uh, K-Mag. He looks a bit like Mark Ericsson. Um, like with blonde beard and blonde edge. Reminds me of Mark Ericsson, anyway. He doesn't look like him, really, but... I'm just, you know. Uh, then Vettel, Sebastian Vettel, he, he didn't have a good <laughs> miles off his teammate, weren't he? He would 10 think he scraped a point due to everybody else, due to two drivers coming off it. And then look at look at Leclerc, He's, he, he got an opportunistic, again, an opportunistic podium. And that's the second time now in four races he's got that podium when that car's nowhere near a podium. So... He's, again, he's there. He's there at the right place. A little bit like Norris, actually. He's there to pick it up when because Norris fell back again this week. But again, towards end of race, last lap Norris, um, last lap L Lando, sorry, um, he, he ends up uh, he ends up stealing some of those positions back. 
Um, so yeah, uh, but the person I'm gonna give it to, not Vettel, not Alban, but I'm gonna give it to uh, Grosjean because I think Grosjean, what a what a pap race again. They had a good strategy ass, and it did look like they may scrape a point or something like that. But I mean, the way we're driving, it, it, it was it was careless. I mean, I don't know much about Formula One, but watching what he were doing and the way he was swerving in front of drivers just before um, just before uh, braking zone and stuff, it it, it was just it just it looked daft. It looked stupid what he were doing, and he came up with some dodgy excuses as well. Like um, oh, I had to make I had to make. You know, what, what, you've got to make the most of it when you're up there and do this, that and the other. But yeah, but not at price for other people, other drivers' lives. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Webber pretty much uh, said it all when he said he's out of his depth in this in, in Formula 1, which is pretty damning, isn't it? And do you know what? I've always been a bit of a Grosjean fanboy, but twice now already in this little mini-series I've done, I've had him as a tears, you know, because he's not, he's not performed, isn't he? He's not pulling... This He's not right. He... he, he He's actually dangerous at the moment, I think. And that's must be looking and thinking, reserve driver time, you know? <laughs> or uh, do we bring somebody else in? Or let, let's give Russell a go or something. Or they won't do well because Williams won't release him. But uh, I don't know. He's, he's struggling. He's struggling. And um, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> and we've said this for two seasons now, but I can't see him being in next season. They've been very loyal to him, and he was a once a good driver. And I think two seasons ago he was still good. I mean, he had a really good performance in Austria, didn't he, when he came fifth? But for a long time now, I've the last couple of seasons, he's he's he's, he's on way out. I think. I mean, last season were pretty poor, and this season, it's care. It's almost like reckless driving, and I like him. I do like him because uh, you know I can put the fact he's French aside. <laughs> Just kidding, French people. Uh, but um. He's Swiss anyway, he was born in Switzerland, were not he? He's not actually uh, born in France, I don't think. He's just, he's just lived there a long time. But, uh, yeah, so there we go. So, Grosjean, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but you've got to do something quick uh, and prove to people that you should, you're should. worthy of being in Formula 1 because out of everybody on the grid, even Latifi, you know, he's doing all right and he's qualifying okay in most, most, most weeks anyway. And uh, and he's only been here one season. Giovinazzi had a good race. He completely outperformed Raikkonen this weekend. So there we go. It's a shame, but I do like another one. I do like Grosjean. I think he's, he's, he comes across as a really nice person, but he's, he's not. He's not. So he's not doing very well. So uh, last, that's it. The only thing I've got to do is now give this race a score. Uh, now I was going to give it. There were times it race where I thought it was going to be a four. Then it got to a five because I thought, yeah, there's a little bit of strategy involved. It is interesting me a little bit, but I did I did find myself fast forwarding a little bit because I watched rerun on the uh, channel on on because it was a full race, weren't it this weekend? And I just thought typical one where it's a full. We get to actually watch a full race on Channel Four, and it's not that good. But then the final lap did make it relatively interesting, so I'm going to give it a six out of ten. I give it a six out of ten. I think that's fair enough. It would be a five out of ten. Middle, really middle of the road, very forgettable. But that last lap will probably make this a relatively rememberable um, Silverstone Grand Prix. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this is my missus. I will be back next week. I'm going to put up either that side or that side a little link to the playlist to my other videos that I've done based on the, the races so far. I think I've done two more. The very first race I didn't do. Uh, so I've done the Styrian one and I've done the Hungarian one. And then there's this one as well. So, cheers. And I'll see you on the next uh, F1 review.